Hello everyone and welcome to my winter marsh tutorial with lovely migrating geese. Today, to follow along, you'll need three colours. You'll need Payne's Grey, Prussian Blue and Raw Umber. Uh, and I'm using um, quite large paper. This is a quarter imperial sheet paper, which is roughly equivalent to A3. Uh, and you can see I'm just using a large hard tape brush here to uh, wet the top uh, I'd say two thirds of the paper, just with uh, clean water, get that nice and soaked in so that the paper is ready to take the paint. Uh, we're going to do a lovely sty wash today uh, to do a beautiful wintry landscape. So you can see I'm just starting at the top of the paper and washing my paint gently over. I've created this lovely neutral uh, greyish shade, you can see some Payne's grey at the top there, a little darker. Uh, and I'm just washing it down using the water to help bring the colour gently down uh, in a lovely uh, natural gradient. Uh, this colour is in fact a mix of all three that were on screen just a moment ago. That's Payne's Grey, Prussian, Prussian Blue, sorry, and uh, Raw Umber, uh, mixed with lots of water, um, so they are lovely and uh, neutral. You can see already uh, gravity is working its magic on the paint, it's starting to, to drift down across the paper, getting a little uh, line of water there at the bottom, which we don't want, so I'm just using um, a piece of tissue to just soak that up. We don't want that there because uh, as it dries it might bloom outwards uh, into the paint and create cauliflowers uh, or create, you know, sort of nasty uh, lines that uh, we don't want. This is going to be a lovely smooth painting, hopefully. Um, for those of you that can't see, my painting board is uh, roughly at um, a 45 degree angle, which is why you can see the uh, the darker grey at the top there is uh, drifting beautifully down the page um, using uh, gravity to pull the paint uh, down and create a, uh, a nice sort of marbled sky um, but still nothing too bright. Uh, I want a lovely sort of pale wintry sky. So now that the sky is done, I'm happy with it, I'm not going to touch it again, um, until it's dry at least. Um, I want to do the marshlands below, which I'm going to dry brush with my um, hardy brush, which as you can see I'm starting to <laughs> having a little difficulty starting off, but that was just uh, not quite enough water there, so uh, off camera I am soaking my paintbrush, you can see it's a lot wetter there, and just scraping it lightly across the paper using the grain of the paper to my advantage to create these lovely sort of um, speckles and sparkles of this dry brush here. Uh, I'm using um, cold pressed paper um, which has is, is, is not terribly rough but still has um, a lovely texture to it which allows for uh, this kind of dry brushing to be uh, really effective uh, when creating water scenes. not the camera. <laughs> um, but I am happy with that so um, I'm going to leave it to dry. And here we are, this is it, the finished product. Um, dry at least. You can see uh, the colours have lightened considerably and the paper is still lovely and flat where I've taped it. Um, so I'm going to begin now with a smaller flat brush and I'm going to put in a very thin line um, across the right hand side here which is going to be um, a headland of sorts, sort of looking into the distance, seeing uh, a line of distant land. I don't want anything too thick or too large or too defined, um, ideally just a, a nice simple straight dark line here.
can see here, I'm just going over this line, pulling it out a little further, uh, drifting it into the middle distance. Uh, I'm bringing in a little bit of extra Payne's Grey here just to uh, darken down part of the headland. For those of you wondering about the colour, this is simply a darker mix of the colours um, that I already used for the sky and for the dry brushing. Um, this is just Payne's Grey, uh, Prussian Brew and uh, Raw Umber uh, mixed all together on my little saucer palette uh, and with plenty of water uh, just because I wanted to keep the, uh, the sort of the tones, the tonal values uh, quite similar in this painting. I wanted to use the same colours uh, for the pales and the darts just to give it that lovely balance uh, and the feeling of sort of completion that everything sort of fits and everything works. You can see again now I'm coming in with some dark paint here following the line of the uh, the dry brushing that I did earlier uh, to create a, a, a spit of land and <laughs> stretching out into this lovely glittering water uh, where I'm going to put um, some bulrushes. Uh, you can also see that um, off camera I added uh, another bit of headland on the uh, left side of the horizon. You can see another little um, strip of land, a little dark stripe there. Um, I didn't pop that into the film just because it's actually the same uh, technique that you've already seen me do. Uh, it literally just um, a line of paint drifted along the horizon. And you can see here that I switched to my fine brush. This is a uh, fine round brush. Um, I think size triple zero. It came out of um, a multi-pack that I ordered online. Um, no particular make or, or brand, uh, just a, a, a nice cheap pack of uh, brushes that I decided to order when I was first starting. And it served me very well so far. So uh, I'm using this to add in a little bit of detail to this bit of land, darkening down some edges, giving the um, impression of uh, some distance. Uh, I'm also using it to add in uh, some reeds and rushes. Now you can see here, I'm just adding in um, some little ripples of reflection uh, for the reeds that I've just put in. See, just very simple, just little side swipes of the brush. Uh, these very thin lines that I've just put into the water below where I've created these little reed banks. Uh, it's going to just give the impression uh, of some reflections in the water. And now still using the same brush, I am turning some of these rushes into bull rushes. Uh, or cattails as they're also known I believe. 
um, just by uh, just doing a little, um, a, a sort of like an oblong, sort of like hot dog shape, <laughs> uh, just on the uh, end of some of these long reeds that I've put here. Uh, try not to do it on every single one, although the uh, temptation is certainly there because I love how they look. Uh, I'm trying to interspace them uh, almost uh, sort of randomly among the clumps so they don't look too formal um, or sort of pre-planned. And there we are, slight jump there. You can see I've put in some detail now on the left hand side using exactly the same technique as you just saw. And now onto the, uh, the main event. Well, it's all sort of the main event, but for me, this is the main event, which is the lovely uh, skein of geese that I decided to put flying across this lovely um, gray wintry sky. Uh, and these are very simple to do, uh, they look complicated when you see them all are sort of flying across in silhouette but really when you actually want to paint uh, simple uh, goose flying silhouettes you can see I've just put sort of a gentle, uh, a gentle line, uh, a slightly wiggly, not entirely straight line and I'm going to pop two triangles on the top um, and just do a little bit of extra sort of um, detail for the head, just a little sort of roundness there not even really a circle, it's just using the brush to, to sort of front load the paint to give a, the impression of a head with a beak. Uh, and and, and that's, that's really it. Now you do need a, a steady hand for these, I will admit. And my hands aren't the steadiest. <laughs> Uh, so if I can manage them, then uh, all of you certainly can, I'm sure. Uh, these are very much going on a sort of uh, on a whim at the moment. I haven't decided their placement. Um, I'm just sort of putting them in and um, just uh, letting the mood take me for where I put these, uh, these lovely birds. You can see there just a simple line and a couple of triangles. And there we are, a little bit of extra paint for the head, a little swoop down just so that it's not a straight line. So you've got a slight curve for the belly of the bird, which you can see in silhouette. Uh, and I like to vary the wing placement as well, so you can see both of these geese I've done so far have got their wings up, you know, in their sort of mid flap, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but if you're doing if you're doing a lot, it's good to vary this placement. So you can see this third juice that I'm doing uh, is, uh, is 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 wings down, uh, mid flap. <laughs> is that the technical term? <laughs> it should be. <laughs> um, but yes, it's exactly the same uh, procedure, but just um, upside down. The sort of the little the small wavy line, and then two triangles for wings on the bottom, and a little bit of extra paint for the head. Now I'm going to do one more to show you. And again, you see this lovely, just sort of simple triangular shape. It's almost sort of the same shape as a sailboat sail. Uh, and then the little secondary triangle just poking out of the side there, uh, just to uh, imply the, uh, the length of the wing on the far side. You can see I've added in a few more here. <laughs> Uh, this is the pattern that I chose, it's roughly uh, the sort of flying V that we are so familiar with. 
um, but I didn't want it to look too symmetrical or too sort of picture perfect so to speak so you can see I've sort of spaced them out and given a little distance between them so just going to show you doing my last couple of birds And like I said, this placement wasn't planned in any way. Um, I simply knew that I wanted a flight of geese. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll just sort of throw them in where they look good. And uh, I believe I managed to do that. And there we are, there's my geese, there's my marshland, uh, there's the painting. Uh, thank you all for watching along today. I really hope this uh, might inspire you to uh, do one of your own or at least try out some of these techniques. Uh, geese aren't scary, or at least uh, not in the painting world anyway, maybe they are in real life. <laughs> they have a bit of an attitude, but that's uh, one of the reasons I love them. But anyway, yes, um, thank you everybody for watching. Um, happy creating, and yeah, if... Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this video. Uh, so thank you very much again and goodbye for now.